fantastic to have you tuning in once again. I'm in the best mood, which usually means when I listen to music. Nothing pumps me up like listening to my favorite music. It makes me feel like I can do anything and gives me the confidence to take on my day and any challenge that comes my way. Confidence is a pretty important thing to have. It's what gives us the courage to take on new things, speak up for what's right, and be ourselves no matter what. But confidence that comes from listening to your favorite song, or maybe getting a new outfit, or a new cool pair of shoes, well, that kind of confidence fades. Confidence, or true confidence, is much deeper than that. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. It's finding out how much He loves you and know that He is always with you. If you live with that kind of confidence, you can make the most of whatever God has set in front of you each and every day. That's right. You can press play, get in the mix, and join the party. We have a new theme song for this month, so get up on your feet and we're going to press play on it now. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! When Jesus began to travel around, teach, and perform miracles, people wondered how he could do such amazing things. 
Who was this mystery man who made blind men see and attracted crowds of thousands and then fed those thousands with five loaves and two fish? I think that's a fair thing to wonder. Whenever I get curious about someone, I just creep them on social media. One of the people with questions was a religious leader named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. And to top it off, Nicodemus was one of the leading teachers of Old Testament scripture. So he's not like all the other nameless leaders we usually hear about. So this guy was a big deal. He was. And even though Nicodemus did his best to follow God's rules, he may have felt something was missing as he heard Jesus teach. Nicodemus, being the scripture nerd he was, was very curious about Jesus. Well, when there's a new, better kid on the block, you want to go and see why everyone thinks they're so cool. Like you said, he was kind of a big deal. So Nicodemus didn't want other religious leaders to know what he was up to. After all, most of them wanted to put a stop to Jesus. So Nicodemus got out his ninja suit, night vision goggles, tactical gear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, ninjas are from Japan and they come like 1500 years later. And they didn't have night vision and I definitely don't think they had tactical gear either. Then how did he pull off getting away from everyone? He just left that night. There was no electricity back then, so it got like really dark at night. Oh, well, still risky, still cool, not ninja cool, but... But when Nicodemus finally found Jesus, he told him, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, and we know that God is with you. Wow, that must have been hard for him to admit when he's supposed to be God's number one guy. Jesus replied, what I'm about to tell you is true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. Um, I don't know about you, but once was enough for me. Plus, I think I'm a little big for that now. That's basically what Nicodemus said. And Jesus responded, what I'm about to tell you is true. No one can enter God's kingdom unless they are born of water and the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay, this is making even less sense. Once again, that's what Nicodemus said. He knew the scriptures inside and out, but had never really heard this version of this before. So then what does it mean? Well, let's start with being born again. Jesus knew that Nicodemus felt like there must be something missing or wrong with him. Don't we all? So Jesus was speaking to him and us in an example we could all understand. When babies come into the world, they're so pure and fresh. They haven't done anything wrong. They're perfect. Well, we're not babies who can just, just love and be loved like all the time. Well, Jesus would disagree. God loves us so much that he can look past all the things we've done and still see that pure, perfect part of us. And we can too. What? Uh, where? I want to see it. Well, you need to let the parts of you that feels like there's something wrong with you just die away. Then you'll see what God sees, and when you see what God sees, you can be confident because God loves you. And the water part? Is he talking about baptism? We're actually going to be filming a COVID-friendly baptism today after worship, and we'll be able to watch it ne next week in worship. He is. Back in Jesus' day, they had a ritual bath called a mikvah where people would go and dunk themselves completely underwater to, to kind of do an act of washing their soul. Water is also a symbol of death back then, so people were doing an act that showed that they were committed to letting the part of themselves that saw them as bad and wrong and just let that die away. I I was gonna say, I was baptized and I have not seen God's kingdom. Well, if you commit to washing away unhealthy thoughts about yourself and the world around you, you will. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much 
made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. As Jesus began to travel and teach and perform miracles, people started asking, Who is this man? One of these people was a man named Nicodemus. He had been born a Jew. Well, yes, we are God's chosen people. Not only that, but Nicodemus was also a Pharisee, an important religious leader, and he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. After careful consideration, I find that you have disobeyed God's law. And to top it off, Nicodemus was one of the leading teachers of Old Testament scriptures. You must never work on the Sabbath. Uh, would you like to hear me recite the other 612 laws? So it seemed like if anybody had a direct path to heaven, it was Nicodemus. But even though he tried his best to follow God's rules, he might have sensed something missing as he watched Jesus teach, as he heard about the amazing thing this young rabbi was doing. The other Pharisees, though, did not approve of Jesus. They say he turned jars of water into wine at some backwards wedding. Ugh, peculiar. Uh, I also heard he makes sick people well, just like that. That's less disturbing than driving all the money changers and sellers out of the temple with a whip. Did you hear about that? Nicodemus didn't know what to think. All of these signs. Jesus couldn't do things like this if he weren't from God, right? Nicodemus was so curious he decided to talk to Jesus himself, but he didn't want the other religious leaders to know what he was doing, so he snuck out in the middle of the night to find Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Listen closely to what I say. No one can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. B born again? How can someone be born another time when they're already old? Nicodemus was trying to imagine what on earth Jesus was trying to say. I mean, Nicodemus had already been born once as a Jew. Didn't that mean he would get into heaven? Surely you can't mean someone would have to go back inside their mother. Pay attention. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. <sighs> Nicodemus's mind raced. Jesus was saying that simply being a Jew wasn't enough, that following the rules couldn't get him to heaven. There was a new way. How can this be? You are Israel's teacher. Don't you understand these things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He is the Son of Man. Everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Years later, Jesus' friend John helped to make it clear as he wrote down this amazing conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Okay, there is so much great stuff in this one short verse. I think we better break it down. Let's start right here with God loved. God made us. He loves us more deeply than we can ever imagine. But just like Adam and Eve in the very beginning, each one of us has broken our relationship with God. Every time we lie or disobey a parent or do something we know is wrong, that's called sin, and sin hurts our relationship with God. But God had a plan to make things right. That's why God gave. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave the most incredible gift ever, his own son, Jesus. Jesus lived on earth as a human being, but he lived perfectly. He never sinned, never broke a single one of God's rules. And then he gave up his own life by dying on a cross to rescue us. When Jesus died, he paid the price for our sins, sins that we could never pay for on our own. And because of Jesus, our broken relationship with God is healed. We can be close to him like sons and daughters. 
anyone can have that relationship with God. Whoever believes. Anybody can believe in Jesus. You, your mom, your dad, your best friend, the new kid at school, the guy who feeds pigeons at the park. Anybody can believe in Jesus because Jesus is a real person. He came to earth about 2,000 years ago. People talked with him and followed him. And like Nicodemus, they watched Jesus do amazing things from making blind people see to feeding thousands of people from one tiny little lunch. And people saw him nailed to a cross until he died. But here's the amazing part. Jesus came back to life and hundreds of people saw that too. Jesus is alive right now. He's living with God in heaven. And we can live with God forever too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. That's the key. You can have a relationship with God, not just now, but for always. When you believe in Jesus and that he died to pay a price for your sins that you could never pay, God gives life forever with him. And just like Nicodemus discovered, you can't earn this forever life by doing all good things or following all the rules. It's a gift from the creator of the universe who loves you no matter what. Now, remember Jesus' friend John who wrote all this down? He adds another thought. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. He sent his son to save the world through him. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, when you follow Jesus and put your trust in him, you can have confidence in knowing that you're part of this amazing, never-ending story that God is telling. And you'll be able to share that story yourself as you grow in loving God and loving others. What gives you confidence to face your day? Lots of practice? A good night's sleep? Oh, one of Dad's famous breakfasts? A sunshiny day? Brand new shoes? All of these things are great, and they can sure give you a lift. But what happens when you twist your ankle? Can't sleep? The pancakes burn? The storm clouds gather and you get mud on those new kicks. Suddenly, you don't feel so up anymore. It's tough to face your day. You feel downright deflated. But there's a kind of confidence that can't be washed away in a rainstorm. Because what God sees when he looks at you never changes. In God's eyes, you are chosen, accepted, valuable, created for a purpose, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And when you learn to see yourself the way God does, you can face anything. Because God's view of you will never change to the end of time and beyond. When you have confidence to get in the mix, others can see God at work in you. That's why confidence is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. I'm glad Jesus used the example of babies. I love babies! And it really helped me realize that if I'm supposed to be reborn like a baby, it means that we want to love and be loved all the time. Exactly, and you are lovable, exactly for who you are, no matter what. And that if you make it a point to see yourself the way God sees you, you can have a confidence that doesn't fade away. I think we need to say our bottom line one more time before we go. You can be confident because God loves you. Well, that is it for this week, but we will see you again next week here at Kids Connection. Bye, everybody. Bye.